Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to uh, Hoff Bergman. We have made it to the second day of uh, September, and uh, we're going to be moving into October very, very soon. I want to get one field of barley in the ground before we do move into October. The growth schedule has October and September as months that you would be planting barley in. So I want to go ahead and get one field ready and then the other field can be one month behind it with respect to when it will be ready next year. Barley today brews tomorrow or brews next year basically is what we're looking at. Welcome Jack. I said howdy earlier but you might not have heard. In the pre-show I was talking about the new farm production pack that was announced last Tuesday a little bit of a surprise announcement I don't know who was expecting anything and I was thinking and hoping very very much that we would have fact sheets drop yesterday but we did not get fact sheets and when asked to Giants as to would we see any fact sheets at all on this pack? It sounds like the answer is a no. So it sounds like we're going to be left in the dark unless they go and release more blog posts as to what is in the pack until we get early access to that pack to show it off to everyone. But I was really hoping we'd have the fact sheets to continue a little bit of the hype and hopefully maybe answer some more questions. I think some more questions have popped up since Tuesday. Centered around the production pack and maybe what can actually be produced. So in a few of the screenshots, there are like chalkboards. And the chalkboards are set up and they have something written on them. Well, if you zoom into those chalkboards, there are products listed on those that we cannot currently make. And as a result, one has to naturally think to yourself, are, is that a little teaser? Are those things coming in the pack that they haven't talked about in the blog post? Are these things just printed on the board to take up space? And it makes me wonder, are they on other chalkboards we already have seen before and really not paid too much attention to? Jack, we just got started. We're going to be streaming for about two hours. So it is 8.04 p.m. of my time. We're going to stream until approximately 10 p.m. Eastern tonight. Let me pull up a picture and I will show you what I mean about these screenshots. And you all can tell me, you all can tell me if you've seen these on the chalkboards already in the game or not. Maybe. Maybe we can really go off the walls and say if they're not coming with the production pack, maybe they're coming in something that has not yet been announced. All right, here it is. Oh, yeah. Look, we got hot baked bread. We got cookies. Choc Choco, Choco Cho. Small bread, rye bread, oat bread, donuts, French bread. Hotties. I don't know what that is. And then we have Italian pizza. Well, we have donuts here in the background. All right, we got the different breads. Different shaped breads. Right? 
I don't even know what the heck that is. Maybe that's maybe that's hottie. I don't know. So this is one of the cell points that is in the pack, which makes you wonder, well, what's this sign for? What are these saying? Right? That is chocolate. We've seen that before. We've seen that palette before. We haven't seen that before. What is that? And you may say to yourself, well, it's just maybe deco. Maybe it's just decorative. But we see that come up again. Here's your here's your cleaning robot for your solar panels, Richard. We'll talk about that a little bit. You might think it's just deco, but look. Look, here we are inside the warehouse. And there they are. What are these? What are these? If it's if this is this is a warehouse it's empty. It's empty when you place it. We've seen it empty in the trailer video. Right, so there's a couple other boxes that are... Um, they may be washed taters or other vegetables. Right, we just won't know. But there's only, according to the blog post, there's only 20 things included in this pack. And I really don't think we've got uh, enough headroom for new productions. Unless this pack adds new breads to the bakery and adds donuts to the bakery, that's a possibility. That's why I went into fact sheets. I was really hoping to get fact sheets to maybe answer a few of these questions questions that seem to be just lingering out there plus fact sheets help keep up the uh, help keep up the hype without fact sheets we have an announcement and then three four weeks later we have the release of the product all right jack catch you later so the solar panel robots do exist. I know in the blog post they said the solar panel robots were there to clean the panels because of the dirt and dust that's kicked up from your fields. I suspect they're only going to be in the new ones as opposed to the um, all the previous ones. That could open something up, Schultz, with respect to with respect to that. Now it might not be something that Giants has implemented, but well, we won't get access to it if it's actually a well, it is a paid DLC, so it's going to be in the it's going to be a uh, a copy protected file. But we can always hope that it is unprotected in whatever comes next whenever they announce whatever comes next because then maybe you could have the dirt map shader that gets applied to vehicles maybe you could apply that to a building and have it uh, over time you get dirty Or maybe you just apply it to windows. Thanks, what's up? Welcome. Welcome. Well, I mean, yeah, Richard, it's gonna be there's gonna be scripts involved. And to some degree, us PC players, we don't think too much about it, but these DLCs bring functionality to console players 
that sure PC players can just add a mod to but they're not universally always accessible because of a script Well, we could always just power wash our, our windows, right? I am a little surprised that this map doesn't have barley as a pre-planted crop when you start the game or at least maybe a guaranteed field or two that's got barley in it because of the brewery kind of wanting to focus on that but what we do have so we've got some fabulous farm barons Greg me using a nuka cola thank you for being farm barons you all have sponsored today's video I mean, if you want to take a squeegee to a window. Farmer Andy sounds like the perfect person to, uh, to figure that up. Schultz is concerned about the, um, the eventual overtaking of the world by AI that has been predicted in so many movies. I tend to agree, Schultz. I tend to agree because we have the we have the ultra ultra accurate documentary named idiocracy that is a documentary all about the dumbing down of america which really i don't have a frame of reference but i could probably speculate is maybe more or less the dumbing down of of human civilization as a whole And now the rise of a AI to uh, uh, just accelerate the dumbing down because I don't need to know how to do it. I can just ask something else how to do it. And then just blindly trust it. Just like that GPS where it would tell you to turn right, but there's no right turn and you just drive off a cliff. Drive into the ocean steer straight into a building you know I've never done power wash simulator but I've heard plenty of folks mention it to PAX when they came up and talked at the booth It almost has me wanting to check it out. Nope. Nope. Not, not really. But uh, they did make it sound entertaining and uh, relaxing. Well, you know, Richard, I kind of already believe the world has ended. And we're already living in a uh, simulated society because of a few interesting facts. Fact one, if the candidates for president here in the United States over the last, let's say, three elections 
If the ultimate candidates that we have gotten in the past three elections are truly the absolute best that are available, then the world has got to have already ended. Because you can't tell me that in the entire country, those individuals are the absolute best. The world had to have already ended. That's pretty much the only evidence I need. Then you have shows like Westworld. That was a pretty interesting show. It is on HBO, so it's not overly accessible to everyone. But I've said I've said for a long time that Idiocracy is a is a documentary. They they list it they list it as a comedy. The government tries to cover it up. But it is a documentary in all regards. I don't know what WD is. The only WD I know of is Western Digital, and I don't really see why they would be dealing around with a, uh, a show on HBO. Here, Tuki, here's your, here's your thumbnail tracker. Gold Gaming, good evening to you. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? this runs no, we can't go over that that's got barbed wire that'll hurt let's go and check some things out so our carrots are still being made Chickens are doing okay. Oh, I remember something I did the other day. Oh, did we close already? Oh, we already closed. No, we didn't. Oh, good. I've got some eggs I want to sell, lady. Oh, look. Now we'll get some money to money over time for those. Thanks. Thanks for doing me a solid. Let's go check out our, our honey. They is oh mouse it's okay it's your your reality is your dream and and waking up is surely means you're being unplugged this thing back up it feels like one full load in the honey extractor is going to equal a box of 
Honey jars. Oh, that sounds great. Sounds like something we might have to have here in the next couple days now, actually. We had a late lunch. Celebrate our oldest's birthday. She turned 20 yesterday. And uh, we went out to dinner around 2. And got back around 4, 4.30. I probably remember that from the cherry video last time. But I don't own the cherry orchard at the moment. Yeah, Farmer Andy has done a really good job with the honey setup. He had a, a it was even a bit more, uh, it was even a bit more involved in, um, in 19. The honey setup in 19 was a bit more involved because you had to buy bees and then you had to supply, I think, like honeycombs. And then you, of course, had to extract the honey as well this process is a bit more streamlined no no maybe i had the orchard last time there aren't really too many surprises on this map it's just things that i don't remember because i haven't played it in a few months But thankfully there is a playlist. All right, that'll keep running. Let's head back to our farm shop and maybe we can sell some honey. No, we're, we're trying to play this one legit. So the only thing that we've really bought is the... is the bowls. And the hops. We bought the hop area and the bowls. Jabo! Welcome, man. Welcome. Oh, wrong way. You think you can hook up a uh, plow behind this bicycle? I don't know if you'll get enough traction in the field, though. Look, just sell me some honey. I'm just trying to chuck it in at her. I expect money for my honey. Superman off the stairs. There we are. We are good to go. Ryan, what's up? Ryan, I got the courage. This map is not all that bad. 
This map is not all that bad. In fact, I've got a uh, playlist that explains this whole map in detail. Everything you'd ever need to know about this map is explained all the way up to the current release. Uh, what do I think of the new DLC based on the limited information we have? I think it's going to be interesting to explore more and learn more about it. I'm interested in the liquid fertilizer mechanic that the Lily Sphere brings. There's a video online that really explains what that, what that system does uh, in real life, and it looks pretty cool, so I'm interested to try that out. I don't think I'll be using the warehouse anytime soon, but the placeable solar panels, the smaller windmills are interesting for a kind of a starting out gameplay to to get your residual income up you know gameplay like this map which is extremely slow on um, on getting any sort of real money going we even had a well we had a massive in injection by selling a bunch of hop bales and that still didn't really get us very far So being able to put some smaller windmills down and you know have a little bit of passive income there is obviously going to be a good thing especially if you're playing on hard economy you'll be interested to see what the sell points replaceable sell points will buy are they, uh, are they basically gussied up sell everything mods? Or are they limited in what they actually buy? We were speculating just a little bit ago about the signs at the sell points and what is on the placards as to if that's just filler or are we getting new stuff? And I don't think there's new buildings to be put down that's going to produce these things. I'm wondering if maybe, just maybe, existing buildings are going to have things added to them as far as additional new recipes go. But $7.99, it'll be interesting to see it, play with it, figure it out. And then let everyone know, basically by showing it off, if they feel it's worth their wilds or not. We really don't know a lot. It's 20 things that consist of cell points, buildings, a couple farm productions. So it looks like Fallout, what there was, um, what, five, eight, eight episodes already? Or I guess the season one, they just dumped them all, right? So there is that. There is that mention of daily, daily missions, daily cells. Let me get the exact wording. Daily challenges. New selling points have dynamic prices and daily demands, right? So there's a PC mod 
there's a PC mod that GTX has that basically does like demand for products that you can produce. And I'm wondering if maybe this brings that concept to everyone. So right now only PC players can enjoy, you know, contracts to deliver bread and things. So it makes me wonder if maybe that will, uh, how do we not have help? Because we're only delivering hay. Is that why we have zero health? I bought two little rabbit cubs. I want to see how long it takes for me to like get some ridiculously number of rabbits. I was going to move these guys into the juicing facility. But I'm not sure if they don't have any health, how much juice they'll make. Let's 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 move all four to the juicing facility. Oh yeah, buddy. Yeah. You get, uh, you get jiggy with it, okay? Yeah, you get some jiggy with it. We'll come back and see how much juice we have. While I'm over here, we'll get some honey. Get some more honey going on. Holy cow, where did all this come from? let's just say that I haven't watched any of them but I do have I do have access to all eight or when I eventually ever have enough time to watch something right now I've got a little bit of a geeky uh geeky side project going on I'm still waiting for all the parts to come in but most of it is here so I've got the beginning of it built out for uh, Jeremiah flash this is not a honey mod this is a map that has this built in Hoff Bergman is the map you can find more information linked below. But all of the features and functions on this map are built into the map. They are not mods that you can add to other maps. Yutachi93, thank you for the sub. Very appreciative of that. If you're in chat, say hey. And we can all give you a big old round of applause for stepping up and hitting that big old red button. What do y'all think of the two maps that came out yesterday? I asked because, you know, I had to give up my Wreckfest Friday for those maps. Quite the sacrifice on my end. Well, which one are you talking about, you know?
Uh, we do. Gold Gaming, FK's Funhouse. Explanation, FK's Funhouse. For that. Oh, wow, we got lots of honey now. I thought we were just getting one crate of honey per load. But then overnight, all these spawned in. Come over here with a trailer and pick these up. Yeah, we could always put on our bee outfit here. Alpine Hill, yeah, that one was nice. Uh, yeah, tomorrow night we'll be on that channel doing our Sunday night convoy night with Rec with uh, not Wreckfest with American Truck Simulator. So that's the channel that we put uh, non non farm sim things on. How much money did I get from this from this lady? 75 bucks I did not change to the latest beta is it available? I thought it was kind of like still early. I didn't know it was an open beta. Is there anything other than the UI that's different? Bicycle. Have you all heard about the backwards bicycle? Basically, when you turn left, it goes right. When you turn right, it goes left. Really cool videos about the backward bicycle online. Mostly of people trying to ride it and failing miserably. Where else can we sell this? Honey, 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 where are you at? You know, it'd be nice as if we had search. Bakery, farm shop. I mean, that's, that's going to take a lot of honey to get a thousand liters. Oh no, especially if I keep breaking the bottles. Or the jars. Well, we'll be getting to the brewery once our barley's ready. I know brewing last time was pretty slow. But brewing in general is kind of slow.
All right. Oh no! Disastrous hit. Clean up on aisle nine. No one's going to want to buy this honey. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, look at all that. I bet you this is going to be tippity tip. <laughs> it's all good. Gold gaming. It's all good. But, uh, yeah, we'll catch you tomorrow. Over on uh, sun oh, 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 oh. Sunday night convoy night. We've been doing that for quite a long time. Tony, good evening. How are things going with you? Oh no, I've fallen and I can't get up. Uh, we try to add as few mods as possible because the way SCS does mods, it's very unfriendly. So the way this sell point works is we don't get money immediately. We get money over time as the products are sold. They show up here in the, on the shelves. Oh, don't don't ever try to run after you hold your your eggs. Do we have carrots yet? When do they spawn? Last time they spawned right there. Uh, we do have some chicken duty to clean up. That's why we're gonna put it in our compost pile. We could add it straight to our 
garden. I guess we're full on up. We don't need any. Is that full too? I guess it is. Um, all right, we'll just leave it there for now. Okay, so let's see here. We've got, you're not done. You're, you're taking the day off. You're not good. Not good. We do have feel we need a grass or mow as well. Just take the bottom off here and see if he works better. I'm not buying your eggs for 25 cents a dozen. Those are cheap. They gotta be broken. There's something nasty in them. Alright, we'll go to town there. Uh, what's for sale? Nothing good for sale. Let's get a do -do 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 -do. you think I'm selling them for that when they're sold by leader how many leaders how many how many leaders do a dozen eggs take I don't know I've never tried to put an egg in a leader oh that's bad oh well, okay that didn't work out too bad all right let's go buy some fertilizer former G what's up How's it going this morning? Is it morning time for you? Twelve hundred dollars per thousand liters. That sounds expensive. Well, I guess not. All right, now where is consumables buying? Like it's not even on the map.
Catch you later. Old gaming. I gotta go to consumables. Sold. in town here I just don't recall it and I'm not seeing a hot spot so we'll just drive around a little bit see if we can figure it out Did you watch all of them? Was there only eight? So I'm asking if you know where it is. You gotta follow along more. I feel like it might be here. That's a dumb point. That's the paper mill. When do you open? 10 o'clock. Oh my gosh. Now that we have solved that little mystery, it's 
So that was the land market for anyone that wants to know. Clearly I wasn't looking for compost. You can't spread compost at this. And I don't feel like making 700 trips with a manure spreader. This will get the job done. This will totally get the job done. Well, why would I do that? That's not overly realistic. But you know we play realistic-ish here. That ish is very important. It's a very important delineation between ultra-realistic and realistic enough. Ish is important. Right? That's why you say it's supposed to do it this way. So did they end the series as if there's going to be another or was this like a one-off? Sometimes you can tell the the intent of a follow-on season simply by how they closed out the first. For those with Amazon Prime, your prime gaming for the month of April includes Fallout 76, both on PC or Xbox. So if you don't already have Fallout 76 and you are an Amazon Prime customer, well, you can go to Amazon Prime Gaming, just Google it, and uh, pick yourself up your free Fallout 76, as well as several other titles. And then get in the habit every month of going to Prime Gaming and uh, collecting your due rewards. Because Prime Gaming or Prime is expensive enough. You might as well collect as many benefits as you can. Well, Ravenhawk, that's where uh, an application like the video I published a few weeks ago on a program called LaunchBox 
is useful because you can configure launch box with all of your launchers and then it will basically put all of your games in one single app to go to and see and then execute all right what do we got here carrots nope corn maybe parsnips nope beets nope parsnips nope sugar beet nope sunflowers nope that's nice i like that rabbit rob 34 month membership two more months to go and it's three full years three four nothing good who wants to do these i don't want to all right we'll park this Uh, you asked about my bowl juice. Let's go see if they've juiced up. As best I can tell, the juice is over time and it's very slow. All right, later, Binks. Uh, Henrik, I don't watch anything. So, no, I have not seen it. Ah, uh, we have a total of... We have a total no no juice. No juice yet. How did Friday night wreckfest go? Missed that, but we'll be there for convoy night tomorrow night. It's kind of ironic that uh, last week we had the anniversary. This week we had our oldest birthday. Nothing else for a while. there to take the victories away from the cheater Schultz maybe one day we'll get a boat to go fishing be a neat add-on if you could do ice fishing in the winter you got to get a little hut and slide out over the river or over the 
or the pond, lake, whatever you want to call it. Well, I mean, do you blame a guy? I mean, who... I know who was going to wreck out. It was going to be a Ford. Ford was going to be the first to wreck out. Did you see that post I put in? It was like 43,000 SUVs recalled because of fuel line leaks that could cause a small fire. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Field 35 at the start. It's grass. I am going to. I am going to get one, one cut off of it and sell it, and then buy some fields closer. Most people carry a huge fire risk around in their pockets. And they don't even know it. darn batteries are volatile if they get in contact with air. Right, off we go. You know, money could cause a fire. If you have some batteries in your pocket. I had a coworker that had some AA batteries in their pocket along with, well, in this case, keys. But coins could be a good substitute for this as well. And, uh, well, we went to lunch. And he sat down, and then a few seconds later, got up and was hopping around. And we said, you got a fire in your pants? And he said, yes, I do. And he pulled out some batteries and his keys. And apparently, well, the keys and the batteries came in certain contact. And... Uh, well, they turn the keys into an interesting heating element. So enough loose coinage could do the same thing. Oh, I did try the other day to work my hop field to mulch it and um, subsoil it, and it didn't work. So I don't think they need to be worked at all. Let me go over here and show you what I mean. Ah, uh, that is grass. 
So here I try to subsoil. And you can see all I did was get rid of the, uh, I mulched and tried to subsoil and all I did was get rid of the grass, right? But it didn't actually churn up the dirt. So I don't think subsoiling is, is needed for our hops. Alfalfa has a different texture than this. I don't, actually don't know if the map has any alfalfa in it. No, the clover is the only other grass that has been added to the map. And this is definitely not clover. Take this and take it down to our dryer. Maybe we could buy a baler and wrap it. We don't have a baler and well with our money thousand nine hundred dollars in the bank we can't afford too much Grass in my yard is is coming pretty darn close to looking like this. I was lazy last week and didn't cut it. I can't do that anymore. I can't go two weeks between cuttings. Missing nothing. We got a green tractor. There's one. There's the other one. And you could say we've got a green harvester. We had two greens. The only two that matter. So we should be good now for barley next spring. We are going to be getting into the brewing business.
with that guy driving the mower, let's finish our fertilizing. We could bring our our grass down here and put it in this bunker. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. The other bunker has compost in it. So I guess technically I didn't even have to, uh, to buy this fertilizer. I just could have used that compost. I need to see how much they're willing to give me for that compost. We got a lot of it. Oh, next to nothing. So it's not a moneymaker like some other farms. Yeah, it runs right into walls. Oh, it's too tall. Dang it. Are you too tall for here? Oh, you silly light bulb. You know, any other real light would just be, you know, knocked down. But not a farm sim light, no. Farm sim light's gonna stay up forever. See, a fermenting silo here, it only takes chaff. And it's not chaff like if you dump grass in, it gets converted to chaff. It's chaff only. I do like how everything in farm sim is quick hitch. If real life was only that easy, right?
I figure we'll go up here and we'll start we'll start raking. Let him mow. Assuming he's doing a good job of it. Dwayne, did you see the rest of the uh, of Derek's video coming back from from Arizona? Catched it earlier. Did you see the part about the weather? I'm not sure about driving through a snowstorm in a car with no wipers. And no heater. Yeah, we definitely need to offload this field. It's just way too far away from everything else. Well, he had no heater. There's no windows that operated. They were all fixed. It was pretty much a, uh, a very basic affair. Well, I think he's doing a pretty good job at that. And before we go on too much more, I want to bring up a deal that we've got going on with Apex Gaming Computers. Those of you that have been around a while know what we're about to say. Anyone that's new, well, we have a partnership with Apex Gaming Computers and we have set up three custom configurations. Yeoman, Homesteader, and Rancher. These are all configurations that I worked with them on a little while back. Right now you can pick the Yeoman for $870, the Homesteader for $1741, and the Rancher $2656. You see the configurations here. These are all customizable. We've got Ryzen and Intel options. The Intel Arc A750, Ryzen or the NVIDIA 4060 Ti or 4070 Supa Supa. All these systems have 16 gigs of RAM and a half gig NVMe drive, so super fast storage. Plenty of good wattage in the power supply to upgrade in the future as well. If you're interested in maybe upgrading or picking up a new gaming system, consider Apex Gaming Computers down in the link below. Our description below we do have an affiliate link be much appreciated oh yeah we're gonna have some good grass off of this field because it is Fully grown. Oh, and apparently his car had no mirrors. He was hanging his his sunglasses up and using the the reflective coating on them to be his mirrors for 
a pretty good portion of the trip. Oh yeah, we're gonna get a ton of silage off in this field. Where's my GPS? Well, my GPS is not installed. I never put it in the mod folder. We don't run a monolithic mod folder. We have to remember to put certain mods into new mod folders when we start new gameplays. And for this one, I was so focused on basically demonstrating the mods that you get with the pack. I didn't really think about moving too many more other things into the mod folder, so I left it off. Yeah, yeah, but you would think it would have had second gear. I won't spoil the outcome for you. I know you'll enjoy it. And he already posted his uh, his Freedom Factory video. And now we just do our ups and downs and ups and downs. I thought about putting this map on a local server, and I already experimented with that once last week. But I was thinking, you know, I've got this machine, I've got a couple other machines, and every so often. I'll want to do a little bit of farming, get in to make a little movement on the save between live streams. But I don't necessarily want to be sitting at the gaming computer to do it. And to do that, of course, you need to move your save game and your mods over to the other machine. And I thought, you know, what if, what if I just built? A server and I just ran it here at the house and then put this on the server and just that's where I ran it from so it didn't matter where I was I would just connect to the server and play it it'd still be a single player game I'd still shut the server off between gaming sessions but I wouldn't have to worry about copying the the um, the save file around and it made me wonder if other people do that or is that kind of on the is that kind of at the level of of that's a little extravagant so i'm curious what you all think because when and if 
when and if Giants does announce whatever is coming next and when that does get released, I will be updating my dedicated server video. And I could use that as, as another example of when a server might be useful, not only if you want to play with others, but just keeping track of your play game across multiple systems. Uh, Tony, it's kind of my regular job, but not really. I deal in technology at a, at a university in my day job. So I am basically very much, very much in, in and around technical things all the time. So I think, I don't think twice about um, about needing to build something, reload something, change something. So I do have a bit of a technical background. And I just wanted to make sure that it wasn't too far off base. By even just coming up with that idea. Because I know even the idea that you have multiple computers that you could possibly play on is maybe a bit extravagant in its own right. But in this day and age, with the the rise of the handheld, let's say, I could easily see you having your your gaming PC at your house and a gaming handheld that maybe you take with you, maybe you go on a trip and you take it, or maybe you got a lot of downtime at work and they don't really care. Right, so you have the gaming handheld there, or just you know you're you're at the family reunion and you've already done as much family reunion as you want, and you just want to get away from it all, right? So having your local save on a server at that point would allow you to just easily whip that out and get rocking and rolling with it. As opposed to being like, oh man, I didn't, I didn't copy my files over. Or the worst case, not knowing which machine has your latest copy of your save files. Now that's somewhat, somewhat, uh, somewhat resolve with Steam. Because Steam will let you share your saves across across installs, right? But not so much your mod folder. Unless you have a single monolithic mod folder that you just have installed everywhere. But it doesn't really automatically move around with you. So I've got the gaming machine here that we're gaming on right now. It's a slightly older machine with a Ryzen 5900X, 32 gigs of RAM, uh, ample hard drive storage because we we stream on this machine. We currently record to this machine. We do our video editing on this machine. This is basically the workhorse of the channel. I have a laptop which I use when traveling. 
for video editing and gaming and recording. So we used that when we were at PAX to get the map video out that released on Wednesday, right before PAX started. Uh, we used that to do a little bit of work with respect to our PAX video that we released after we got back. Uh, it was the it was used when we were at the National Farm Machine Show and put out those vi videos. I have a small system, what's called a mini computer, that has a, a Ryzen chip that also includes integrated graphics. And I now use that to evaluate the maps when they come out as to how well should they run on a low-end system. And I use that system to create the video recently on optimizing your settings for low-end systems. So I use that as a good benchmark for, for someone that's got maybe a real low-end graphics card or maybe worse, an integrated graphics card as to how well should the map that they want to play work. For example, this map does not play very nice with low-powered systems. Uh, the two maps that came out yesterday did not play very nice uh, with low-powered systems. But then uh, several of the maps that came out before that should be just fine because I didn't have any issues running 60 frames or more on those other maps. So that's basically a rundown of the the main ones that we have. Now, yeah, well, I mean, one of the, the I guess maybe the biggest shoot, the biggest barrier entry is if you were to roll your own server you need two copies of the game one to play on and one to host because both versions both server and client have to register with giants and therefore you need two different activation codes you can't have the same activation code being a client and a server of course you could rent a server like our partner G portal explanation G portal should bring that information up for a couple bucks a month and then have access to it that way and then you don't have to worry about owning two copies because well G portal and license G portal and Giants have their own agreements We use G Portal for all of our multiplayer servers. So when we do do Farm Sim multiplayer, we're going to be doing a release party come April 29th for the Farm Production Pack. That'll be on a G Portal server. Uh, our Wreckfest multiplayer on Friday nights is on a G Portal server, and our Convoy on ATS is also on a G Portal server. You could technically play from any PC that had your game installed so it's not cloud gaming like the games the PC still needs to be able to run the game but in theory if you had let's say the Steam copy of the game all you gotta do is install Steam on any PC log into it and install the game and you're good to go Steam only let you run one game at a time on your account so you can be logged into your account on multiple machines, but you can only have one game running at any one point in time. So, for example, if I have Steam installed here, 
and I have Steam installed on my laptop, I can't play a game on my laptop and play a different Steam game or even the same Steam game on a different machine. Clearly you can't play two games at the same time on two different machines. That would be, that would be an interesting feat. Uh, it all comes down to time frame, Dwayne. If you play the long game, then owning your owning two copies is cheaper. By far. If you don't play the long game, then renting can be cheaper. If you don't have feet, then then maybe um, then maybe you have hands. Maybe you have someone else's feet. So think of it this way. Let's go to G Portal. And let's go to Game Servers. Farming is a simulator. Look right here. So you could, it's if it's only going to be you. Let's pretend you're doing this for single player functionality. Right, you can get a create your own config. Four is is for the smallest I can go. Uh, apparently no, I can go with two. Uh, maybe it won't like doesn't like no, it doesn't like two. 43 slots. Okay, so now it's happy. So, four slots. This is the number of concurrent players that can be on the server. For a year is $60.74. And then you can pick where you want to have this. No Canada, so you'd have to pick someplace. New York, I guess, is your best place for Canada. $60.74, right? So you can buy the game for less than $60.74. And then run. You have to have then a PC, though, that will run it. If you have the PC, then, then you're not out that money. If you don't have a PC, well then you gotta you gotta factor that in. And then let's say let's say you need to buy the DLC. Right? Let's just go to Steam here. If we were to buy everything, it's $200. That's not a good example because clearly, clearly your season passes are in here. So let's, all right, let's just say this. We're gonna buy the premium edition, which includes everything. Well, it's on sale. Let's pretend it's not on sale. It's gonna be $88, $89. Okay, $89 plus the DLC coming out. That is $7.99. So let's just go an even hundred bucks. Okay. So at 60 bucks, a hundred dollar game investment would be a year and a half of the server. Now, if you're someone that hasn't, doesn't likely play the game for a year and a half, then play the short game and a server would be cheaper. If you're someone that's played Farm Sim since its release, then yeah, ro rolling your own server if you have the means will always be cheaper in the end. But you don't always have the means. You don't always have the capabilities. Right? And that's where the convenience of a server company 
comes into play. Or you might not necessarily have the bandwidth to support a local server connection. Because even if the box is right next door, next to you, your system is still going out to the internet and coming back in. Not really a lot, but it's still doing it. Still, still consuming some of your your bandwidth. And if you really don't have a good connection to begin with, but for me, I had. Um, I've got the Steam copy. I've got a collector's edition copy. And I've got a copy off of the Giants eShop. So I've already got three three copies. Right? Yeah, yeah. Or maybe food for thought for whatever comes next. The bandwidth usage is, is it starts to multiply, especially if you really do have people connecting to you. So for me, that's not a problem with with gig up and back, right? Someone cut connecting to me, or or heck, even 16 people connecting to me is not that big of a deal. But that is also a factor. Tony, good night. Thanks for dropping by. We're going to leave in about 10 minutes ourselves. The other thing to factor is maybe you live somewhere where power is expensive. So a couple bucks saved and not having a machine on is a couple bucks you can spend somewhere else. Well, good evening. Uh, glad you could join us. Even if it is for the end, we're going to make sure this grass is nice and wet when we put it in the silage bunker. So it'll be sure to rot quick. Well, you know, we are halfway through the month of April. We got to be getting close. Got to be getting close. We'll push it back. 
push it back to May time frame. is three weeks away April has one two one two three four well depending on when you look at it four to five weeks I've got to be moved completely out of our office building at the end of the month. We're doing a second phase renovation that includes my floor now and while well, the office that I've been in since 1996 won't be in anymore come the end of the month. been quite the uh, quite the collection of things accumulated it's like moving a house only thankfully it's just one room at least for the office but I got to move everybody else out too Raven Hawk, we've done a fabulous job in keeping these fairly straight. How do I stop the timber trucks and trailers from falling over at every turn? Ah, uh, drive slower. Don't stack as much on. Or try a different trailer that maybe has a better center of gravity. using a modded trailer then that could very much be part of the problem It's just like trying to rent drive around with a large stack of uh, large stack of bales. Well, then I'd say uh, load the trailer or less, or drive slower. Those are pretty much going to be your only options. This map is not on the mod hub. Very much not.
No, that doesn't work, Genetic. There is a link to my download video and where you can download the map in the description. Basically, you can find this map over at lsfarmingmods.com. Yeah, then someone needs to maintain it. Like I don't I don't even maintain I don't even maintain this. You can see the last time I edited that. I have no idea what that is, Stewie. Is that a map? If it's a map, is it one that I've already done a video on? I mean, there's only been like a dozen maps in the last two weeks. And trust me, I don't remember names of maps more than like three days after I did a video on it. If it's even that long. Well, if it's not on the mod hub, I don't go looking for mods. I don't have time to get the videos I want to do on the good stuff that's actually on the mod hub, let alone go digging around for the things that I probably literally will never end up using. And then if I did go looking, then I'd have to spend who knows how long trying to verify if it's actually the legitimate place that the map author or mod author put it there and is it actually the legitimate mod author being credited and by then the entire day is going by so no, I haven't looked at it. Don't even have a clue where it's at. Yes, yeah, so I understand what a slaughter place is. Unless you're talking about the slaughterhouse that's on this map, but I don't think that's his name. And if you are, I've already done a video on that. Yep, there's a slaughterhouse on this map. I've got a video on it. It's in my explained playlist. You deliver animals, you get pallets of meat. Pretty straightforward.
If it's on this map, it's covered in the playlist for sure. 30 plus videos covering uh, what, four or five different iterations of this map. Every iteration is builds upon the previous. So just because a video came out for version one does not necessarily mean that it is not still completely accurate. If there are changes, then there is information provided in subsequent videos about that. So really it's a series you need to watch in its entirety. And every time there's a map update, then we just add to that series. For example, we are in 1.4 now. In 1.3, leather production was added where you take animal hide and you can produce leather. And in order to get animal hide, you had to take animals to a slaughterhouse. And you would get, you would get money and you would get leather, you would get animal hides, not leather, you get animal hides as a byproduct. In the 1.4 update, the slaughterhouse was updated to not only provide you with leather, but also to provide you pallets of meat. So we go over that in the 1.4 update video. We also added a new type of chicken to the map, explicitly for meat production. So we have two types of chickens, one for egg and one for meat. We just put barley in today so that we can make some beer in our brewery next spring, next summer. I call this map probably the most influential map in Farm Sim. Going all the way back to Farm Sim 15, there has been an iteration of Hoff Bergman. And over that particular, any one particular scheme's release, the innovations and features that found their way originally via Hoff Bergman into the game wind up landing all over the place on other maps and sadly Hoff Bergman is so under underappreciated that many many people end up falsely attributing some of these innovations to others so for example calves in Farm Sim 17 and even 19. Any map that had a calf in it. That calf was from Hoff Bergman. In fact, I found it quite exciting, well, it's not exciting, but quite intriguing and funny that most of the time, the map author that simply ripped the calves out of the map to put it in their own map left the Hoff Bergman ear tags on the calves. The baby animals that we now have in enhanced, the enhanced animal pack. The small chickens, the ducks, the goats, the baby goats, the billy goats, the calves, the heifers, the baby pigs, all found their way to Farm Sim 22 via Hoff Bergman and then eventually I assume with permission via the Enhanced Animal Pack to other PC players 
and other maps. Farm Sim would be a very boring place without Farmer Andy. That's why I almost make it my mission to cover this map as much as I can. It doesn't fit everyone's playstyle. Uh, there are no turkeys that I know about in Farm Sim, other than some that play it. Oh, I wish my laugh track was still working. No, nope, but we have rabbits. We have little baby rabbits, we've got cats, we've got chickens, we got ducks. We got baby chicks that grow up into be adult chicks. And we have bowls that produce uh, a liquid that you can sell. Do we have any now? Uh, we have one leader. <laughs> we, we have one liter of, of liquid from these males. They are slow to produce. So guys, with that, we're going to wrap it up for the night. Well, thank you all for coming out and watching. Tomorrow night will be on a Sunday night combo night. American Truck Simulator over on the FK Funhouse channel. It is always a blast. With American Truck Simulator and our convoys, we do not drive realistically. But if you're looking for ultra-realistic American Truck Simulator gameplay, then don't expect to find it. But what you should find is a bunch of people having fun to play the game a way they enjoy. And every so often we actually make a profit. Some of us. At least. Others like Rabbit Rob. Well, he's always in Well, on Fridays, we deliver the pain. On Sundays, we deliver the load, okay? It's just sometimes the load gets a little bent up. But it's not like that isn't how all of your normal delivery guys drive anyway. So until next time, happy farming.